Hello to my Wednesday whippers. Hooray, we're back. It's Wednesday. I hope you've got your whips out ready to join me. Um, for those that have not been to Stone Magpie before, this is my channel. I am called Suzanne and welcome. Please do consider subscribing, liking and sharing because we like to share the joy on this channel. Wednesday is all about whipping and by that we mean we get our diamond paintings out and we whip together and have a chat and share news etc. Please do feel free to comment and join in. So look at my picture. If I just pop this back, look, that is the end. Aha, uh -huh, I'm on the bottom row. Ooh, so this could be the last Wednesday whipping for this Libra picture. We'll see. We will see. Right, how has everybody been this week? I hope you've kept nice and busy and been able to do lots of your own diamond painting this week. That's the ideal, isn't it? I'm just going to start with the apple symbol here. I've seen a few... I've had a fairly busy week, I have to say. Um, not mad, but, you know, fairly busy. So I've been working on my diamond painting, as you can tell from me reaching the bottom row. I've also been looking at buying some other kits. And news about my frame. Okay, I think I mentioned last time that I'd actually chosen the frame for this picture and that I decided to order a custom with a mount from an internet company. They're called Easy Frames. Um, really excited, a little bit worried that I'd made the right choice, you know, not seeing it in real life as it were. Um, but being able to upload a photo onto their website and choosing a mount and a frame that I thought would suit it was the best way forward. So ordered it, all absolutely fine. Then it arrived by courier. The box was open, so the courier, bless him, said, you know, whilst I'm here, just check the top to make sure it's not damaged. So we did that. We just took out the top of the frame, I checked, it didn't look like the um, cardboard corner edges had been dented or scratched or anything like that. So I said, no, it looks absolutely fine. I'm happy to receive it. Oh my goodness, it's, it, it is massive. So it was a massive box. Anyway, so I waited for my husband to get home so that we could unwrap it all together just because it was quite heavy. So we unwrapped it, took all of the cardboard box off, and then it was sort of wrapped in a corrugated cardboard. So really well packaged. Um, and I have to say, I love the color of it. I really do. So I can't wait to show you, but it will be a bit longer because as we unwrapped it, unfortunately there was a scratch on the bottom of the frame. There were two little indents on the side, but do you know, I would have been happy about that. You know, I would have probably used a little bit of a Sharpie just to color it in, but the scratch on the front was just too much damage really to accept. So I went onto my computer and I sent them a quick email saying I'd received the delivery I sent off a couple of the photos and you know, I was really impressed because the chap, can't remember his name, um, sent me an email back, um, I would say within five minutes, it was so quick, apologising that there was damage to the frame. Um, I'd asked how we could solve the issue. He immediately said he could get the courier to come back out and collect. Um, it was on... Friday that the frame arrived and he said he could get the couriers out on Monday with being the weekend. So fair play, I mean, so quick. Um, oops, sorry, I've just spilt my drills all over the place. 
just tip my tray up, hang on a moment. Um, so from Friday evening, and they came to collect the frame on Monday morning. You can't ask any better than that. So now I'm waiting again. I'm waiting for an email or some sort of news about when it'll be that I receive my replacement frame on my... Um, I don't even know if they're going to replace it or just change the damage. I'm not quite sure yet. So... Yeah, that's a bit of sad news, really. I'm hoping it's here before I actually finish my picture and that it's not held up. Um, but it was exciting to see the frame itself. I think I've made a good choice. I hope that when I show it to you that you agree and that you like it too. So, yeah, good news and bad news. <laughs> good news, I like it. Bad news, I can't have it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, what else? I've been on some websites having a look at diamond paintings. I'm thinking of getting a few smaller ones. So, yeah, that's been fun having a little look around, seeing what's new out there. I don't know about you, but um, don't you find going on to, I don't know, maybe I use the same suppliers all the time, that it's just not renewed very often, so you, you tend to end up looking at the same pictures over and over again. Um, I found that, I have to say. So I've been going on to some of the groups, chat groups on Facebook to see where other people purchase their diamond paintings from. And also somebody did suggest the Diamond Art Club to me. I have never bought from them before and I know that they're really popular and really high quality. So I have had a very quick look on there. I think I probably will end up purchasing a picture. I just need to decide on what. I think that would be good fun to get one with ABs in. So yeah, so I've been busy doing that sort of thing in the background. Um, so you never know, I might have quite a few unboxings to do. Actually, I thought about that today, you know, because um, I buy my skincare range online as well. Sounds like I never, ever go to real shops, but I do, I promise you, I was in town at the weekend. <laughs> oh, dear me. Um, I'm a prisoner in my own house. No, I'm not. I, I do get out and about, but I do shop online, I suppose, quite a bit. It's so handy, isn't it? It's just so handy and you can shop at any time that you want. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yes, I bought my skincare and um, that arrived today. And do you know what my immediate thought was? Oh, an unboxing. And then I thought, oh, don't be silly, it's not an unboxing, it's your skincare. Oh, and that made me giggle a little bit because I thought, can you imagine if I was doing a live YouTube? I've never done a live YouTube yet, I'm not sure if I will. <laughs> and I unboxed something that was completely irrelevant. <laughs> oh dear me. I could just imagine doing that as well, you know, knowing me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I think that would be quite funny, actually. But uh, <laughs> imagine the comments that I could get. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Anyway, it tickled me. Let your imagination run wild, ladies and gents and... Uh, <laughs> You probably caught up with where my mind was going at that time. <laughs> uh, anyway, sometimes you see things, don't you? And it just, because we're so mad about diamond painting, obsessive, bordering obsessive, I would say, if not completely, um, that you see things and it just reminds you of diamond painting all the time. Um, I've got a jumper on at the moment and it's an adamant hoodie. And it's like circles, like pixelated. And it, to me, it just, it's perfect. Just reminds me, I'll see if I can move my camera to show you. Hang on a moment. Can you see that there? 
upside down, but it's adamant and it just, <laughs> just reminds me of diamond painting. It's perfect. <laughs> my two favorite things all in one. Right, sorry, I have to move my camera angle again. There, perfect. Um, so I think things like that happen to us, don't they? Us diamond painters, we get reminded of things as we see them, of our obsessions. <laughs> hey. I think I'm tickled by the most bizarre things you know in life. I think I am. I hope that you are too. I hope it's just not me and you're all sat at home thinking, oh my goodness, who is this mad woman? <laughs> Anyway, back to Diamond Art Club, which is what I was talking about as well. Um, I wonder, because it's an American company, isn't it? And I don't know if I'd be charged customs on it. I don't know um, what the customs rules are now that we've left the EU. I don't know if um, it wouldn't affect America anyway. So that is something that I'm sort of pondering about is do I have to factor in a customs charge to that? So if anybody knows, please would you let me know? Otherwise, I think I'm going to have to look that up um, and find out what sort of charges there would be. Because customs can be quite an expense. Um, and postage, I guess. I didn't look at the postage, so I don't know if it's free postage internationally or... Or what? So I need to look a bit further into that. Okay, just get that symbol there. I've had some lovely comments on my on my videos, by the way. Thank you to everybody that takes time to comment and um, let me know what you're doing as well and the compliments that I'm getting about this picture. So thank you so much. If you um, do enjoy my channel, please consider sharing it with your friends. I really do think sharing this joy is just wonderful. Um, you know, it's such a lovely craft, isn't it? That the more people that do it and join in, the better. Definitely. Um, and that also got me thinking about whether anybody does, you know, like... Um, I think it's like a craft drive, I think they call it, where there's a group of people get together. I know it's been quite tough recently for people all getting together in one place, but like a craft drive and you all take your work and have a chat and a drink um, and craft together. I don't know of any diamond painting clubs that do that around here um, in the UK where I live in Yorkshire. Um, but wouldn't that be lovely as well? Because as long as it's not a massive one like this, I guess it, diamond paintings can be quite easy to transport. Um, so yeah, I wondered if anybody was involved in anything like that as well. There we go. I had a friend come for coffee yesterday and um, she was having a look at my picture really impressed, never diamond painted. She said she didn't think that she would have the patience to do it. Um, but I showed her some of my smaller ones and tried to explain to her how relaxing it is. And the fact that, you know, you can, you can diamond paint as you're watching telly or listening to the radio or whatever you do while you're diamond painting. Listening to me, for example. <laughs> I don't know if she would go for that, but anyway. Um, yeah, just I, I think sometimes people don't quite get get it, do they? That until they try something like it for themselves, um, I don't think they understand why we enjoy it so much. So it's always good to to explain to people what it's all about. I think without boring them to death. If they don't, if they don't want to hear it. Leave it. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up um, do you remember when I did my school key rings on holiday with Laura if you've not seen that then try and catch that it is a bit of a fun video um, and so as a little thank you and because she'd enjoyed it I sent her a 
full drill diamond painting as a thank you for joining me on that video, um, which is like a skull, I thought, being theme. Um, and it was a square drill as well, so I'll find out if she likes it, how she's getting on with it, if she's even started it yet. I, I must catch up with her and find out because I'm hoping that she enjoys it. Because obviously doing a special shaped key ring rather than a drilled picture is very different. So just because you enjoy doing the special shapes doesn't necessarily mean that a full drill picture is for you. But, um, you know, I thought as a thank you, it would be good. Right. I've been doing, have you seen some of my other videos as well? The special shape pictures. I Honestly, they're so different. I really like those. Um, there we go. I'm still waiting to hear from Anne Bai though about the missing diamonds for those. So no update as yet. And I guess with them coming from China, it would take a while anyway. So we will see about that. But those pictures are so bright and cheery. It's just a bit different to do. So, and I think I'll probably continue doing that with doing the big Josephine Wall pictures. And <clears throat> I'm also thinking I've got one more. As you know, I've bought another Josephine Wall ready because I knew I would miss this one. And I really like the picture. So I. I bought another one and then I thought I might, after that one, do something a bit different, but still a big one, a, di a big picture. So I'm on the lookout for that as well. Um, but to do a big picture and then to have little ones alongside, I think is ideal. So there we are. Da -dee, da -dee. Yes, I had a bit of time to work on um, my picture this week, um, so I got I got quite well on with it. I'm not sure if I'll have a chance to finish it by the end of this week's update. I'm hoping so. We will have to wait and see on that one. It would be good, wouldn't it, to get to the point where it's actually finished for that video on the end of week it'll be end of week 14 this week oh do you know i've done it again i haven't put my start time on gems flow i have to just make a note of the time that i started so 18 minutes right i don't know what it is about doing a whip and chat that i i seem to forget the gems flow bit it's probably because i'm setting up my camera um because sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get the, the best angle. And then I forget to put my gems flow on. But do know that I absolutely do remember to add it on afterwards. So the time that I mention at the, at the end of the week is the true time that I've taken. So my husband and I watched a film the other night. Don't ask me what it's called, because I really don't know, but oh my goodness, it was the longest film ever. Um, and it was about, I think it was on Netflix, and it was a sci-fi film. And I was on my computer, sat next to him, doing all sorts of bits and bobs, catching up and whatever. Um, and it was about this girl who kept seeing what she called a ghost in a bedroom. And, you know, I was a little bit nervous about watching it, as you probably know from some of my other whip and chats about ghosts. I don't, I can't handle it. <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, I was sort of trying to watch it, but tuning out at the same time. Anyway, when it got going, her dad went up into space because they had to find somewhere for the rest of Earth to live because Earth was dying or something, something like that. But, you know, it was a really different sci-fi film in the end. I, I quite enjoyed it in the end. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a bit different. But it was such a long film. Uh, it ended up where... Because I, I go to bed quite early because I like to read. I only really read in bed. Um, so I tend to get my gym jams on and whatever. I won't go into too much detail. <laughs> um, and then read. But that night, I ended up staying up till nearly midnight, which is really, really late for me. I mean, yeah. When, uh, when I was at work, I was going to bed at like nine o'clock, so I, I'd get a good amount of time to read. Whereas now I've pushed it a little bit. So I tend to go to bed between... 10, half 10, something like that. But this was nearly midnight. I was like, oh. But it got to the point where I had to keep watching to find out what happened in this film. And I don't want to say too much about the ending because you might actually catch it on Netflix and I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, yeah. So the next day I was a bit tired because I don't know about you, but if I have a late night like that, I still wake up really early. I tend to wake up at about half past six most mornings. Uh, yeah, so I'm wide awake at half past six, husband snoring his head off. So, uh, yeah, I was a bit tired the next day. Not sure if it was worth it, really. <laughs> I suppose it's just because it's sci-fi. Husband's really into sci-fi. Mm, I'm more into like real life stories, um, documentaries, that sort of thing. You know, I like films like Rocket Man. Did you have you ever seen Rocket Man about Elton John? That was really good. And there was also another one, wasn't there, about Freddie Mercury? I uh, can't remember what that one was called either. But yeah, they're my sort of films. Love that. Or real life crime stories as well. As long as they're not too morbid. I quite like those. Oh, and um, Dirty Dancing is my all time favorite. I used to watch that with my sister. We used to, you know, when you had um, the video recorders at home before Netflix and all of that. Well, we used to hire out Dirty Dancing every weekend, my sister and I, and it's still a favourite. Love it. So. Yeah, actually, the other week as well, um, The Lost Boys was on. Now, that was my, one of my sister's all-time favourites because she loved Corey Haim. And there's a scene where he's in the bath um, putting bubbles in his hair and stuff. Oh, the amount of time she rewound that video to watch that clip. Oh, I couldn't tell you how many times. So that was nice when that came on, you know. Da -da 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 -da. That's the song. Um, I ain't got no, whatever it is. Uh, anyway, so yeah. But... I have to say, watching that film again, though, so many years later, I don't think it's aged well. <laughs> I was like, hmm, yeah, a bit naff, really. But I know that there's a cult following for it, so nobody tell me off. <laughs> if you really like that film, I know there is... Because um, they do conventions, don't they? Um, my sister actually went to a convention with her best friend um, and met... Oh, I don't even know the actor's name. I'm, do you know what? I'm getting worse and worse with names. I think it's an age thing. Um, but I don't know his name, but he was also in Bill and Ted's. And it wasn't Keanu, because I remember his name forever and ever. Amen. Love you, Keanu. <laughs> but the other one, the other one from 
um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, him. She met him and she said he was the most lovely person. Um, really gracious, because they were a bit, you know, hi, <laughs> all giggly and all like that, you know, like they were when they were teenagers. And I think he just sort of took it on board and accepted it. I think they'd had a bit to drink as well, you know. So, um, yeah, so she went to a convention, but yeah, I was like, apart from the dream boat of Michael, I mean, oh gosh, he was a stunner. Um, yeah, the, the film itself, no. I think I'll give it a miss next time. Uh, me and my opinions, eh? It's not like I could make a film, so I should shut up and say, yeah, brilliant, because talented people. And sometimes films do age, don't they? You know, there's a time and a place and all of that, so... But some of the 80s films have aged really well. Like... Um, Breakfast Club. Oh, I love that film. Pretty in Pink, those ones. They've aged really well. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's another one. And of course, Dirty Dancing. And Goes Without Saying. Grease as well. I think Grease, mind you, I suppose it was set in the 50s anyway. And it was made in the 70s, but, yeah. Right. Got quite a few of these little battery symbols, hurrah. I don't know, I haven't even said which part I'm doing. Obviously, I'm at the bottom of the canvas now. So this is the valley. I think that's like um, a water, like a river there. And that's a tree. So I think this is either part of a tree or the mountain or something like that, that I'm working on. Sometimes it's quite hard to tell, isn't it, when you close up? We'll be able to see it when we zoom out at the end of the week. Oh, I know what I've got to tell you as well. And it's really exciting. I'm surprised I didn't start with this at the beginning of the video, but I won't restart. <laughs> now I'm 27 minutes or whatever I'm in. Um, do you know what happened this week? And I was so excited and rather, yeah, excited and happy and elated. Josephine Wall herself po um, posted my video on her Facebook page. Ah! <laughs> I was so thrilled. What she's, um, what she found was week four of my weekly updates. And I think it was the one where I was, com yes, it was. It was the one where I was comparing the Chinese version of this painting to this official version um, where it was her face um, and the clouds at the top. And she found it and she posted it on her Facebook page and said how astonished she was at the price I'd paid for that kit being like a copy version, not an official version, because it was 77 pounds that so it wasn't too far off what I paid for this one. Um, and yeah, and I thought, oh, wow. I was just absolutely elated that Josephine Wall herself as the artist of this picture um, had seen my video. Isn't that fab? Fab, fab, fab. So Josephine, if you're watching this one, I love this picture. Thank you for producing it. It is great and it just resonated with me so much. Which is why I chose it and I'm a Libra. So hopefully she'll keep watching, won't you, Josephine? Keep watching, see which one I get next. There we are. 
got quite a few of these little washi basket type symbols. I think because I'm doing mainly greens and things, um, the confetti in this part of the picture isn't as heavy as it was earlier on. So you never know, I might get finished this picture for the end of week 14. 14 weeks, so that would be, so that's just over three months, about three and a half months, isn't it? 14 weeks. Um, but that's not working on it solidly. You know, if you, when we see the final hours, then I think I would say calculate it by eight. If you were doing like a full time job, diamond painting, calculate it by eight and then see how many days it would take. I think that's the way I'm going to, to look at it. In fact, I might make a quick note of that so I remind myself to do that. So total time divided by eight equals days taken. Okay. What was I doing? Oh yes, I was doing those little green. Sorry about that. I just wanted to make sure that I remember to do that. Finish with that symbol. Sorry, I think I might sneeze. I've got a tickle in my nose. Chew. Oh, excuse me. Right. At least it came out. Sometimes when you need to sneeze and you get that tickle up your nose and it refuses to come out, it's the most annoying thing, isn't it? <laughs> so. Um, another thing was, I was, I was wondering whether to do a video about this, um, and I'm in two minds, we'll see, is people who don't particularly like or enjoy doing square diamond paintings because they feel it takes longer or they don't like the way, you know, that it's finished or whatever. Um, I think it's such a shame and I was going to do like a, perhaps like a little um, how to get started with squares type video. I might still do it, I'm not sure. But I just thought I would add a little tip into my whip and chat. I'm going to try and find, yeah, let's do these rings here because there's a few of those. Um, and I'll get some more pink wax on my pen as if I'm just starting. Um, so with, with square diamonds, I always start in one of the top corners, either the left or right, it doesn't really matter. But you can start anywhere, it doesn't, it doesn't matter when you're diamond painting, but for me that seems to be like a logical place to, to get going. Now, when I do round diamonds, I sort of hold my pen like a pen and I pick up the diamonds in the middle. But when I'm square diamond painting, I tend to hold my pen more upright. I don't know if you've noticed as I've been doing it. Um, and sometimes when I'm first going with it, I pick them up in the corner like this. Can you see that okay? Um, especially when I first start them because it gives you a better viewpoint. I'm not, I don't know if I... Um, it gives you more of a view of where you're placing your diamonds. Obviously, when it's surrounded like this, it's not as effective. But when you're first doing a row, it helps to see where the edge is. So it's just a little tip or technique there. If you struggle to get going and they look a little bit higgledy pickledy, then try picking your diamonds up just in the top corner and placing them. And also, when I first start, Instead of pushing down heavily, I just sort of place it. Um, and then when I get going, I start pressing them down more. And that's only because, obviously, when they're surrounded like this, they push into place. But when, when you're doing the first edge, you haven't got that, um, 
you know, the ability then. It's a bit like freehand, isn't it? Um, so if you just gently placed them and they weren't square on, you can just manipulate them a little bit before you press down. So that might help anybody that is starting with squares and finding that they're not getting on with it because they don't seem to be sitting straight enough. Might help, I don't know. And I know that the checkerboard method really helps people as well. Um, now with a painting like this with so much confetti, it wouldn't help really because I suppose you st could still do one, miss one. So that is the checkerboard um, method is that you would place one diamond, miss, place another diamond, miss, place another diamond, miss. So it ends up looking like a draft board or a chess board. Um, and then, and that helps sort of um, straighten them up a little bit because the aim is to get them as straight as you can possibly get. Anyway, I just thought I would mention it. As I say, I don't know if I'll do a specific video for it as such. I might, we'll see. It's quite hard sometimes getting the right camera angle to be able to show people properly. You know, because I, because I hold my pen so upright, it, yeah, anyway. Might do that, might not. But yeah, if, if you're struggling to, if you're picking up your square drills and then trying to put them down and you're holding them like this, I think it's harder. And people say that they find them a lot slower. Well, once you've got a bit of practice behind you, well, you've seen me diamond painting as well. I don't think they're any more slower than squares, uh, than rounds. Just takes a little bit of practice. It's a bit like doing a recipe, isn't it? You know, when you first do a recipe and it seems to take forever and you're like, oh my goodness me, if, I'm, if this is a recipe that I'm going to cook every week, you know, it's too long. And then you do it and you do it and you do it and it gets quicker and quicker and quicker and you can have your meal on the table in 15 minutes <laughs> rather than an hour it took you the first time. It's a bit like that. A bit like that, I think. Oh, gosh, I've left out some of these symbols as I've been gassing. again I just want to try and catch the symbols there's one of those batteries that I missed as well because what I, what I was thinking the other day we're getting to the end I don't want to <laughs> I think I've finished frame this picture because I think once I've it's a heavy frame, so once the picture's in the frame, I don't really want to have to take it out again. And can you imagine if I'd missed any of the diamonds and then I'm, I'm staring at this picture? Because you know which bit you'd end up looking at the most. <laughs> most people probably wouldn't notice, but I think any diamond painter who missed a diamond and framed it would automatically look there every time. So I want to try and avoid that if I can. And I'm even wondering whether, when I frame, whether to stick the canvas to the backing because it's such a big picture. I don't want it um, to slide down or, do you know what I mean? Sort of crease top, I don't know. I don't want it to move in the frame. Do you remember, oh, you might not have seen, but I did an experiment with a 3D diamond painting where there were all layers. And what's happened, the, the 3D version is on my wall alongside the flat original version. And on the 3D one, I put a little pearl on 
Puss on the Lady's Sword. It was the Justice picture. And that little pearl has dropped down a bit, so it's no longer central on the sword. It's sort of skew whiff, as I would say. It's just sort of, I think the glue on the back <clears throat> has come away a little bit and it's slipped down. Um, and I keep looking at it and thinking, should I reopen the frame and, sorry, that's got a pimple on it. Um, should I reopen the frame and try and straighten that pearl? But if you've watched the video of me framing it, I was so nervous about getting it into the frame anyway that I'm now nervous about removing the frame and sorting that pearl out. So I don't know. I don't know if it will make it worse or whether it would solve the problem. So I keep looking at it and doing nothing about it. Which is a shame because it's a lovely picture. I wonder if I should do another 3D one one day. Now I've now it's no longer a trial and I know that it is possible because at the time when I did that one I didn't even know if it was possible because nobody else had ever done it as far as I know um, and that came really from my card making background and it is effective I think it's more effective in real life than it is on the picture on the photos that I took of it actually it stands out a lot more um, yeah, so I might have to think about doing another one of those because they were fun and it's a way of using your leftover diamonds as well. Making your own chart and then doing one of those pictures. So I wonder how many people have actually made their own chart now. Have you seen that video of mine to do that? Have you actually attempted to do it? I know that um, if you don't have enough leftover diamonds it can be an expensive way of creating a painting but I have to say it is then uniquely yours and you can swap out the colours and things like that with the um, pixelstitch.net you can pick which colours you have you may not have enough of them because they do obviously take a lot um, but you can actually buy spares as well from Smith's Beads. And if you do do that, um, I do have a code for 10% off, which is SS10. And you'll get 10% off your order. Um, so just another option for you. And I just printed them off on thicker paper that I put through my home com uh, home printer so I didn't print them on canvas or anything like that I just used paper but thicker yeah so I might have to have a look at doing another one of those there's too many ideas and too little time isn't there all of these little diamond symbols, talking of diamonds. Do you know, I thought that I might get this section um, finished during my whip and chat, but I don't think I will. I suppose it was quite a long section, wasn't it? And it ripped here because as I pulled the paper down, it just gave way. Um, so normally it would probably be here. I really do need to spend some time in my garden weeding as well. Oh dear. I'm sat here in the conservatory and every time I look out of the window, 
my garden shouts, weeds. Um, to be honest, some of them are quite pretty. <laughs> some of them are flowering because <laughs> they've been left that long. Uh, but really, I need to spend an hour getting it sorted. And here I am, diamond painting instead, because that's how it goes, isn't it? Sometimes you're just like, oh, housework or diamond painting. It's an easy choice. <laughs> but then, you know, when you've got visitors coming around or something, you're like, oh no, I should have spent a bit longer doing that. Getting into the garden, sorting it all out. It's a bit of a thankless task though, isn't it, weeding? Because you know they're just going to pop up again the next day. They grow so quickly. It's a bit like dusting, isn't it? You dust and polish and it looks beautiful for, what, a day? <laughs> and then it looks like you needn't have bothered. Especially if you've got little animals living with you. But it has to be done, hasn't it? It has to be done. Unless you've got a cleaner. <laughs> if you've got a cleaner, oh, I want a cleaner. Well, one day I might win some money. A lot of money. If I won a lot of money, Apart from, obviously, treating family. Um, that goes without saying, because you've got to give back, don't you? But um, I think, if, and I'm talking about a lot of money, you know, if I won a lot of money, then I think the, the um, first two things I would do is employ a cleaner, one, and a chef. <gasps> Can you imagine? Oh, I would love to have a chef. I'm not very good at cooking. I'm all right at making cakes, but then if you make cakes, you end up eating them, don't you? And <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, a chef would be good. Oh, can you imagine? Hello, hello, Suzanne. What would you like on the menu this week? Mm. Perfect. Wonder what you would buy if you won a lot of money, like if you won the lottery or something like that, what would you do? I think you'd want to, well, pay off your mortgage or buy a house or get a new car, all of that sort of thing. Treat your family to a beautiful holiday. And then what? Because, you know, you're talking a lot of money. I think I would also invest it. Um, and support some charities. Oh, wouldn't it be nice just to sit and be able to help out people as well? You know, wouldn't that be a lovely thing to do, to be able to do as well? <sighs> anyway, I don't even play the lottery. <laughs> I don't know how I think I'm in a chance to win it when I don't even play it. I might have to start. Now I've put it out there to the universe. I think I need to buy myself a lottery ticket this week. <laughs> oh my goodness me. What am I like, eh? <laughs> Imagine all the diamond paintings you could buy. Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. oh, you could get the diamond painting studio. <gasps> Oh, wouldn't that be fab? Wouldn't it be fab to be able to do some sort of retreat? <gasps> and everybody comes and diamond paints together and joins in the, the joy of... 
stress, a bit like a spa, but for diamond painting. Oh, I want to do it. Right, I'm definitely buying a lottery ticket this week, guys. Would you come? Would you come? <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, right. I think I got too excited then. I missed some more symbols then. I think I'm a bit excitable this week, you know, people. <laughs> should we better should we blame Josephine Wall for that, shall we? Should we say? Suzanne's a bit too excited this week after that. Calm down. Calm down, Suzanne. I haven't even got my cup of tea next to me today either. Or sweeties, or anything, nothing. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe tea calms me down. <laughs> they do say though, don't they, that tea is so good for like stress. You know, if you've, I think it's the classic, I don't want to be, um, what's the word, stereotypical, but the English in their tea, it's like any problems, would you like a cup of tea? I think it, I think there's something in it though. There's definitely something relaxing about a lovely cup of tea. It's the first thing I think about when I wake up on a morning. That first cup of tea on a morning is the best. Oh, I'll tell you about tea as well. I went to visit my son at uni, he's in Durham, and um, he said, have you heard of bubble tea? And I was like, bubble tea? Because he knows that I love tea. And I said, what on earth is bubble tea? It sounds awful. <laughs> I was imagining, you know, like tea with washing up liquid in it or something. Oh. Um, and he was like, oh, no, I think you'll like it, Mum. I think you'll like it. Come on, let's go and get a bubble tea. So he took me to this um, cafe, I, I would say it was. And it has, like, a menu. And never have I seen a menu like it. Um, there were different teas you could have. So you could have fruit teas or classic teas. Um... And I was just like, I don't, I, I don't know what to choose. I'm not really a massive fruity tea person. I don't mind a herbal tea sometimes, but, you know, I'd rather have just a breakfast tea. Although I did go to the Ritz once and, um, you know, in their Palm Cafe and I had a rose tea. Oh! <gasps> You don't put milk in it, you just have it black. Oh my goodness, that was beautiful. That was really lovely, very special treat. Um, anyway, so I was in this cafe looking at this menu, thinking I don't know what to go for. And um, I, said, I said to Ben, what do you normally have then? But I didn't want to get exactly what he got, I didn't want to copy. So he said, I usually get a classic black tea with um, oh, what do you call it? Not taper. Um, oh, I've forgotten the word. Tan um, oh. Taro, I think he called it, with taro. Something like that, anyway. Um, and I was like, oh, what's that? And he said, well, it's like, you, you get a straw with it because you drink this stuff cold. And it's like lumps in the bottom and I said oh my I said this sounds gross <laughs> anyway so I said I'll tell you what then I'll have a classic tea as well but I'll have um and I think they called it um it began double o um oh I'll have to flash it on the screen I'm so sorry I've forgotten the word for it it's so annoying being so forgetful now. It'll come back to me in the middle of the night. Um, anyway, it was a milder tea to the one that Ben was choosing. And um, I said, instead of having this taro or whatever it was called that he was having, I'll have tapioca. I love tapioca. And I was imagining, you know, like when you're at school with school dinners 
and you were having the milky pudding. So we used to have like tapioca, rice pudding, um, custards and things like that at school. I used to love school dinners. <gasps> I used to love their, you know, um, roly-poly and custard and bread and butter pudding. Um, spotted dick. <laughs> Always makes me giggle because I'm so, uh, honestly, I'm terrible. Sorry. Um, dead fly pudding as well we used to have. Can't remember what the difference was between that and spotted dick, but there we are. Um, anyway, all those sorts of things. So I was imagining tapioca to be like the tapioca pudding, like small lumps. Anyway, when my tea came, it was like huge black lumps in the bottom. And, I, and so I said, you know, is this the tapioca? And I said, yes, that's right. Okay, right, fine. So I tasted this tea and it, like I say, it was cold. And honestly, it was a bit like drinking um, milk with a, some sort of little hint of a flavor in it. I think it was slightly licorice -y, but I couldn't quite put my finger on what what the flavour was, but I think it was like a licorice, but not not strong, just a hint. Um, and then when you, because it comes in this plastic cup, quite large, with a thick straw. So when you suck on the straw, the milk or tea and the lumps come up all at the same time. So these lumps, these big black ones, do you know, they were so tasty. They were, and you properly chewed on them because they were big. And I was really surprised. Um, I think next time I would probably go for the flavored tea that Ben got because the classic black tea, I think is a bit of a stronger tea. And I like strong tea, um, builder tea, as we say, um, is my preference. So I think I would go, but yeah, so different. Um, and I think it originated in China, I think. It was either China or Jap Japan. I think China, though. Um, really interesting. Yeah, so we got one of those and walked around Durham. Went to see the cathedral. Saw some, oh, the cathedral around the buildings, around the courtyard. They have some beautiful doors. And I have a thing about old doors. <laughs> um... So I took quite a few photos. I might put them on. I might put them on for you to see. Um, yeah, it was a lovely day. So... Yeah, something new to try. I don't know if I don't know if these um, bubble teas are everywhere in the world. I'm not sure. So, but definitely in the UK, certain places have them, or you can get one in Durham if you really want to. sorry for them when they're finishing uni at the moment because jobs seem so difficult to get when you're a new graduate um, so I think Ben will be coming home soon um, he's doing a master's degree now so he finishes in September rather than July like the um, like the undergraduates finished in July but he's got till September whether he comes home before then I don't know but yeah, it's a struggle for them. So we'll see how long he's home for before he gets a job. So, tough times. The um, GCSE results and the A-level results came out in the UK last week as well. Um, and again, they've had a bit of a rough time of it. But the results were really good, so well done everybody who did their, got their exam results this year. I think the teachers were giving their 
marks because no exams for the second year running so yeah they did really well hopefully if they're going on to uni that that'll be good for everybody and if they're going on to apprenticeships or going straight into work then i wish everybody all the best Okay, right, I think I'm going to stop there. So thank you for joining me, everybody. Keep tuned because we are coming to the end. I think this week will be the end of the week for my update, the end of the picture. So I hope you can join me. Enjoy your own diamond painting and thanks, everybody. Bye for now.